A warm welcome to the launch webinar of the version 21 of the Human Protein Atlas, the open access resource for human proteins. The vision of the Protein Atlas efforts is to map all the pro human proteins using data-driven life science to create an atlas of the human proteome. We believe this is important for everybody interested in human biology, uh, therapeutic drugs, and uh, precision medicine efforts. Since the proteins are the building blocks of human biology, they are the targets for almost all pharmaceutical drugs, and they are the targets for most future precision medicine efforts. We have created more than 10 million images which means that this is one of the largest efforts to generate tissue images. And all of these images are available in this open access database. It is now 20 years since we started this initiative. Uh, during these 20 years, we have generated more than 15 million web pages, which are then accessible through the database. And these are updated annually. Uh, more than 1,000 person years have been involved in this effort and we have uh, generated 55,000 antibodies that are used. And as I said before, 10 million annotated images. We are very proud that we have published more than 700 papers uh, and also are very happy that we have so many visitors to the, to the open access resource, about 400,000 per month. We are very happy to announce that the version 21 has now been launched. This new version of the Protein Atlas contains a lot of new information, a lot of new data, and we have chosen to separate the data into 10 separate sections in order to make it a little bit easier for people that are interested in the different uh, information about the human proteins. So we have a section on tissues, the brain, the single cell types, tissue cell types, a pathology section, uh, a special session for the immune cells, the blood proteins, the subcellular section, and then uh, on human cell lines, and finally also about the metabolic enzymes. So one can explore then the information in these 10 different sections. And in the following, I will then go through these sections very quickly for your information. So the tissue section focus on the expression profiles in human tissues, both on the mRNA and protein level. What is new for this version is that you can now explore the genes that have similar expression profiles. We call it expression clusters, and we will come back to that later. The brain section focus on the expression profiles in different regions of the brain, including both human, pig and mouse, and again, you can use uh, to this to explore the similarity in the profiles across different regions of the brain. The single cell type section contains information based on single cell RNA sequencing. And what is new for this version is that we now have data from 26 different human tissues that actually spans most of the important organs and tissues in the human body. And again, you can then in this version also explore similarity in the expression profiles between different genes. The tissue cell type section is a new section uh, for, for this version. It contains then expression specificity information generated using network analysis of transcriptomics data, and you can then learn about which genes are then specific for, for a given uh, tissue. The pathology section contains information based on both mRNA and protein expression, 
from 17 different human cancers and this gives you among other things a catalog of genes elevated in each of the cancer types. The immune cell section contains single cell information uh, on expression profiles covering a lot of different immune cells, B cells, T cells, uh, monocytes, granulocytes and dendritic cells. The blood protein section contains information about the plasma concentrations of proteins detected in human blood, but it also contains an updated version of the prediction of all proteins uh, that are secreted from human cells and tissues. The subcellular section provides insight into the spatial temporal uh, subcellular distribution of proteins uh, so you can learn about the subcellular distribution of proteins in different cells. The cell line section contains information on expression profiles in 69 human cell lines which are commonly used in research and this of course gives you a, a feeling for what genes are expressed in these cell lines and what genes are enriched in a particular cell line. The metabolic section explores the enzymes involved in human metabolism. So here you can go in and look at the expression in tissues of different enzymatic pathways uh, for metabolic genes. As I said before, the version 21 of the Human Protein Atlas has a lot of new features and a lot of new content. And in the following then, we would like to do some deep dives into the new features of the version 21. And we're gonna start by hearing about the data sets and the normalizations by Dr. Lynn Fagerberg. The new version 21 of the Human Protein Atlas is based on the ensemble release 103. In this version, we are mapping 20,000 90 genes, and one of the updates is that we have also added immunoglobulin genes and T cell receptor genes. We have made major changes to the transcriptomics data sets. For the tissue data, we now integrate our internal HbA RNA seq data with data from GTEx, and we have now added several new tissues. We have a major update in the brain data set, where we now have RNA-seq data from more than 1300 human samples, and this data have also been integrated with the tissue data. In addition, we also have a much larger number of tissues with single-cell RNA-seq data. We have utilized a new normalization pipeline to improve the quantification score of RNA expression. So we now report RNA expression levels as normalized transcripts per million, or NTPM. In this table, you get an overview of five different data sets from RNA-seq or single-cell RNA-seq experiments, and we show the total number of samples as well as the number of cell or tissue types that have been analyzed. The version 21 of the Human Protein Atlas features a new gene classification scheme based on clustering. In summary, we use the transcriptomics data to create an expression landscape here visualized in a UMAP, where each point corresponds to a gene. If two genes are close to each other, it means that they have a similar expression pattern. We then use a clustering algorithm to stratify genes into clusters, which can be thought of as neighborhoods of similarly expressed genes in the expression landscape. Each of these clusters have then been manually annotated by experts in terms of specificity and function. Some examples of gene cluster notations include clusters with uh, uh, genes related to skin and keratinization, immune cell, ciliated cell, muscle cells and testes, as well as many other tissue cell types and functions. We have performed this clustering analysis on four different data sets tissues, immune cells, cell lines, and single cell types. So feel free to go to the Atlas and explore the clusters for yourself. 
I will now introduce you to the updates of the single cell type section that was first released last year in 2020. And this year we have expanded the data set to now include 25 different human tissues and blood. And this then gives us an overview of all the major organ systems in the human body. We use a combination of single cell RNA sequencing and immunistic chemistry data to study expression profiles in single cell types. And in this section, it is possible to explore genes that are enriched in a specific cell type. And this is then presented as interactive UMAP plots and summarizing bar charts. And the entire data set covers 444 individual cell type clusters that are summarized into 76 main cell types. One feature that is new for version 21 is that we have also performed UMAP clustering based on expression similarity across all cell types. And based on this analysis, we identified 68 gene clusters that were manually annotated to describe the main common features in terms of function, location and specificity. And as you can see, we were able to identify distinct gene clusters that are either related to certain cell types or organs such as fibroblasts, epithelial cells, but there are also gene clusters that have a specific function, such as receptors and housekeeping genes. And each cluster contains both well-known and unknown genes, so these lists are therefore really interesting to explore further. The tissue cell type part of the human protein atlas is a new section that provides information on how specific a gene is predicted to be in a particular cell type within a given tissue, independent of the absolute expression of the gene. This information is generated from bulk RNA sequencing data. We developed a method based on the selection of virtual marker transcripts as the basis for an integrative network analysis to identify genes selectively expressed in each cell type. In addition to the gene by gene search function, there are two main ways the data in this section can be explored. Firstly, if you are interested in which genes have cell type specificity within a given tissue, it is possible to search each in turn using the tissue map shown on the left. The panel on the right shows data for some of the genes that we've predicted to have cell type specificity in the skin, for example in the keratinocytes, the different cells of the hair follicle and the sebaceous and sweat glands. You can also then view the associated protein staining. The second part of the menu on the landing page the core cell type section allows you to explore which genes have specific expression in a panel of cell types that are found in all or the majority of the different tissues profiled. These include endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, fibroblasts and the different immune cell types. Here on the right is an example of one of the genes identified as endothelial specific in multiple tissues and the associated protein staining. I hope you enjoy using this new section of the protein atlas. What is new in version 21 of the Human Protein Atlas Brain section? In version 20, you could already find protein expression in human brain based on GTEx and Phantom data. In version 21, we added more samples and more brain regions. We did this in collaboration with Professor Polkovic of the Human Brain Tissue Bank of the Semmelweis University. Using the punch needle approach, small brain regions, areas and nuclei were isolated these samples were analyzed using RNA sequencing, giving an overview of protein expression in all samples and all regions. Here an overview of the brain regions included in version 20. As you can see, indicated by the blue bars, we only had limited coverage of many of the brain regions, and some regions, like midbrain, were only including substantia nigra. In version 21, we improved our overall coverage of the human brain. We went from 28 subregions, summarized in 10 main regions, to 217 subregions, summarized in 13 main regions, as indicated by the orange bars in the graph. We hope you enjoy exploring this new data. So with this, you have heard some deep dives into the new features of the version 21 of the Protein Atlas, but there is so much more to explore in this new version. We have new method summaries to try to explain how we have used the different data and how we have analyzed it and visualized it. We have updated the dictionaries 
but there's also a lot of new data that has been added to the content of the version 21. But before I end, I just wanted to acknowledge that this has been a team effort from a lot of people. You can see some of them here on this picture and also the names of some of the PIs in the project. I also want before I end to just remind you that we have used the antibodies from the protein atlas to take journeys into the human body with this new amazing 3D image technology called iDisco. And if you're interested, you can read more about this in a paper in Science Advantage from this summer from Adore et al. We have now generated 18 movies and they are all available through YouTube and HPA educational pages. I also want to acknowledge the generous support from Knut and Alice Wallenberg throughout the 20 years that we've been working with the Protein Atlas. But before I end, I all then want to give you a glimpse of how beautiful the human body is with an amazing organ, the inner ear. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the inner ear. It is one of the smallest, yet one of the most important organs in our bodies. The functions of the inner ear are multiple. It consists of the cochlea, responsible for our hearing, and the vestibular system, responsible for our balance. Damage to the inner ear can not only lead to a loss of hearing, but also imbalance, tinnitus, and vision impairment. With these 3D images, it's possible to really appreciate the beauty and complexity of the inner ear.